Today we're reviewing what the M17 is talking about. If you watch my channel for any length of time, you know I review handhelds and I review them in detail. If you want to check out any of those other reviews, click on this playlist right here. Also, at any time in this video, if you would like to support the channel, links will be across the screen and in the description below. So the M17 piqued my interest and I saw a lot of reviews on the system. So let's go ahead and get into the unboxing and also test out some games. And then I'll tell you how I feel about the system towards the end of the video. Okay, one thing I noticed about the boxes is, is usually they're very understated and muted. But in this case scenario, kudos on the M17 because it literally has the coolest graphics on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow up the specs on the next clip in this video. All right, so the specs are on the screen so you can get kind of an idea of what it is. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy open. All right, let's get to the main event. Okay, so right away this gives me like the impression of a Nintendo Switch, but what a Nintendo Switch would look like if it was small. That's just a popular design right now. Um, let's go ahead and look around the console for a sec and kind of figure out what is the orientation of the layout and the buttons. All right, so on the front end, we have the D-pad, which is on the bottom left-hand side. We have the select button, start button. We also have two analog sticks and they can't be pressed in, so they're not actually the buttons that click in. We also have our X, Y, A, B on the top and volume buttons here plus on the right and I think underneath the label yeah we have a, a minus under here so looking at the top here just like in the handheld showdown the orientation and the layout of the peripherals is very important in this case they put the USB charge on the front the audio jack here the HD um, the SD card right here and the on off switch at the top and there's nothing at the bottom here nothing on the sides and literally nothing on the back so this is a little bit similar to the um, RG35X in where if you ever had to get to the battery you've got to literally take the back apart of the whole console um, here we have a speaker it looks like a single speaker here and that's literally the layout of the buttons so it's been about 20 seconds of load time, which is kind of slow, but that's okay. Um, usually more ROM files or uh, more of a system, you know, more included with the system, longer takes to load. Uh, let's just go ahead and scroll and see what we got. So they put you on the first page of the Sony PSP and notice how if we bring the box back, they tried to match the front graphics with the box. So that attention to detail is pretty cool. Let's just scroll. Oh, and I really like that. The UI just kind of slides real nice and smooth. So not really any lag there. Neo Geo, we've got MAME, we've got TAR 2600. I really like how they included the graphics with the uh, number of games here. And the animations is really nice. You got the Atari 5200, Atari 7800. You've got the Atari Lynx here, Capcom System 1, Capcom System 2, Capcom System 3. You got the PC Engine. I really love the PC Engine, especially, you know, since most of us when we were younger didn't have this console. Hey, but if you had this console before um, when you were younger, let me know in the comment section below. All right, you have Nintendo and you've got hacks. Hacks can be good too. You just got to know what you're looking for. Some hacks are trash, but you know, you just got to know what you're looking for. Okay, here we have Game Boy. And it'd be interesting to see, you know, Game Boy has a, you know, 4x3 aspect. So in this case, we got more of a 16x9. So to kind of see, you know, what we're getting. Super Nintendo. We got uh, Super Nintendo again. Make sure I had that right. Okay, yeah, Super Famicom. Famicom is the Japanese name. Super Nintendo. Nintendo 64. Game Boy Color. And I'm just keeping scrolling, guys. So this is coming with a lot out the box. You've got Game Boy Advance, Genesis, Game Gear. I really love Game Gear as well. 263 games right there. 
Got to have your Mega Drive or your Sega Genesis. Glad they included a uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color. And they've also got uh, fifth gen going up with the PlayStation. And like I said, let's go back. I think Ninten yeah, Nintendo 64 would be considered fifth. You have um, PlayStation 1. And it says all games. And, and the number included here, if you can see, is 20,000 games. All right, so you got favorites and back to the original. So let's go ahead and look into some of the games that are included here. We'll start with the more demanding games first, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up with my final thoughts on the console. All right, let's start with Sony PSP. So, and I really talked about this last time. It is very important to include some kind of artwork to display what the game is like. And me, preferably, I like to kind of um, have a picture of the gameplay itself versus the cover, but the covers are okay. Yeah, the audio is good. Right, let's go ahead and check it out. All right. Okay, what I'm noticing is the performance is really great in this game. There's no real lag. Okay, let's try some more PSP games. So, let's see. Yes, yeah, start and select, exit the game. They have the save state, low state game, and quick game. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Okay, I notice a lot of these games are PSP mini games. So, that might be a resource or power uh, reason why they added only the PSP mini games. But... Let's see uh, what uh, Legend of Robo 7. I've never played this game. If you played this game, let me know, guys, how this game is. Okay, you know, we're to the little story part of it. All right. Okay. All right. I'm headless now. Oh, okay, I said I can call my head back. Interesting. Oh, there it goes. All right, let's see if I can find a more demanding game. And uh, then we're going to move on to Nintendo 64. And if it runs this pretty well, I'll say that the PSP is pretty good. Even though it's not running God of War or anything like that. Now, if God of War is on here, I will give it a little test go. Just to see how it works. Okay. Uh, let's just see. All right, this is also in another language, so I don't know if they picked certain ROMs for certain countries for a certain reason. We'll see. Okay. Okay, what do I do? Do I... Okay. I see they added some of the action to the analog stick. Okay. Okay, we're going up. Now I'm starting to feel some lag or hear it in the audio, but gameplay is okay. I don't know if you heard that little bit of lag, but pretty good, guys. I mean, it's playable. Let's see. Hmm. I'm not sure what the exact objective of the game is so far. Okay. I'm not sure about the language. Okay. I'm saying jump that way. Ooh, now it's creeping. Ooh, jittering now. So it took a while to get to the slowdown a bit. All right, I want to try one more game. Let's see if we can find like God of War or something in here and see if we can run that. We'll try Vice City and then you can get an idea of, you know, how the performance is. So we'll try Vice City. And then uh, we're gonna get into Nintendo 64. Hmm. Ooh. Very jittery. Okay, we're 
what do I do? This feels like some kind of hack, but uh, okay, maybe I should press. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Tell me if you remember this game being this jittery, or is it this the, uh, or is this just the performance of the M17? Ooh. Well, I'm not doing so well right now at uh, Vice City. Okay, for some reason it froze right in the middle of uh, the uh, exiting out of the system. I'm not exactly sure why it did that. Um, probably talk about that later on at the end of the video. But let's go ahead and get into Nintendo 64 and see what we got there. I'll say the PSP emulation is just okay. There's no lag in the UI, but one thing I do notice um, in the PSP, there was some lag in certain places. I'm pretty confident it could play all the arcade stuff, So, but we will check on that. Let's go into uh, Nintendo 64 because I know sometimes the performance on Nintendo 64 can be shoddy. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and go into the Nintendo 64. And uh, just to go back, oh, okay, there's 51 games, so they've had choice games. Uh, let's check out Ridge Racer first. We'll, we'll go around a little bit, see if we can find a puzzle, an RPG, and just mix it up, see what we got. A little bit of a jitter. Okay, I'll say this, pretty good, um, but audio-wise, not so good. So, we'll talk about that more. I'm not going to give up on it just yet. Let's try some other Nintendo 64 games just to see if it's audio, if it's a per-ROM basis, or maybe some of the settings that they have. So, I don't know about improving the performance or modding this, so that's another option, more than likely, if it's running open ELIC. So, let's get into... Well, Turok seemed pretty good. Smash Brothers is there. Everybody does Mario. Hmm. Let's look. Mario Kart song is a good one. So we'll do another racing game with Mario Kart and then check out the performance. Okay, audio sounded good so far. You hear that? Really nice. Okay. Now here there's no audio issues it seems. Let's do 50 CC. Select your mm, We'll do DK. Let's do much more cut. Keep it simple. I mean guys, I really like these handhelds. Ah, that's where the issue is coming in, audio-wise with the gameplay itself. Alright, let's get into it. Interesting. Okay, tell us what else. It's Oh, there we go. Okay. So right trigger uses your item. So I can bump on anybody. And... Gotcha. 
Ricci. <laughs> Okay, a little lag. Okay, so that's what I needed to see. So what it looks like is we've got some parts where it picks up and runs smooth and then we can get some uh, frame drops in other places. So I want to try one more Nintendo 64 game and then we're going to go into PlayStation. Then we're going to try some of the less demanding power. We'll go backwards, so maybe Neo Geo you know, uh, CPS-1 or something like that. Ready. Seems pretty smooth so far. Alright, press start. Okay. Yeah. So, it seemed like in certain areas, I don't know if it's the settings of the emulator itself, or if there's improvements you can do, but um, I think it's more so per ROM basis and the settings. Uh, let's go ahead and just pick somebody. Yeah, this one, this game's running smoothly. Alright. Looks like a wrestler. Let's try it's him. To fight. Hold on to your seats. Ready, fight! Let's punch. Okay, so this this game is based on a point system. Okay, so you're trying to get points. How do I grab? Okay, you can also use the analog stick. Oh, I'm getting my butt handed to me. My goodness, three knockdowns. Okay, so this is the amount of knockdowns you get. Okay, so I lost. Okay, so that's a good example. See, at first it was a little jittery, and then it picked up as running smooth now. So, it may be based off of the ROM. So, this console may be more picky with Nintendo 64. Let's move on to PlayStation 1. Try Dragon Ball GT. I got a feeling that the PS1 is going to have a better performance than the others. This is just a hunch. Yeah, I can already tell. It seems like it's yeah, it's a whole lot better. Look at this. Let's try a battle. Seems like it's running without a hiccup, guys. Uh, gotta pick Vegeta, vegetable. I won't let you interfere. You got me fighting pain. This voice acting, my goodness. I didn't know this was a 3D Dragon Ball Z game. Wow. I didn't know PlayStation 1 had one. Oh, jeez. I'm getting my butt. Pan is kicking my behind, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Oh, snap. How do I power up? You trigger left, right, bumper? I don't even know. Oh, snap. Come on. Oh, my gosh. This ain't even right. Okay, I'm gonna throw a power ball, but what else can I do? Okay, that's my kick. That's my punch. Okay. What are my moves? I don't know any moves, guys. Oh, I'm That was tough, guys. Okay, now one thing I noticed that's new is now they have an option called Disc Control. I'm not sure what that's for. Oh, okay, so you can cycle trace status and stuff like that. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe you guys could tell me what that feature is for. But uh, so far, just like I thought, it, uh, it, it performed much better. Um, let's see. We know that 2D games um, do pretty well. I wonder why they put PSP games in here. That, that I'm not sure about that. We also have Tekken. Let's try Tekken because that gives us more of an idea of what the 3D performance would be like. 
So we've, we've done DBZ and that, that worked out pretty good. Okay, it seems like they used the, the Chinese or Japanese version just based off the text and the title. Zau, Eddie. Seems like it's running without a hiccup for a low time. Okay, the music sounds good. Frame rate is pretty good. Okay. You know, the sound of the speaker is really nice too. I normally don't use her. I use uh, Eddie, Lee, Paul, uh, you know, those guys. Very old school. Okay. I say the performance is decent. Very good. All right. Let's go ahead and try one more uh, PS1 game, and then we'll try some of the others, and then I'll give you my thoughts at the end of the video. So far, mm, mixed feelings about it, but you know what? It's a step up from some other systems, and I'll talk about that in the end. Oh, there goes that jittering. A belly flop. Let's see if we can do a belly flop on the armadillo. Okay. I remember when Crash was such an evolutionary game, especially in that 3D era. All right, a little quick sand there. It's getting a little slower. I don't know if you guys noticed. The audio tells more of the story, but yeah, it's a little slow down. Okay, I think I've played enough of this to get an idea of the performance on the PlayStation 1. Oops. Alright, one thing I'm noticing is the 3D games have a similar performance. With that being said, PlayStation to me seems like the best one. Um, let's go ahead and get into... Uh, Super Nintendo, because I know sometimes this one's a hard one to emulate, and maybe pick something Mode 7, or maybe I could just pick something, and there's a huge list here, guys, so uh, forgive me if I don't, don't pick the best game, um, hmm, Boogerman, what the heck, why not, let's play Boogerman. <laughs> Animation is something else on these games. Okay, we got a little storyline there. Let's see if we can get straight to gameplay. <laughs> okay, so far, music sounds good. These trees look crazy. fighter 2 so this is more of your render graphics then we're going to get into more of that render graphics into like your donkey kongs and maybe mario kart just to see make sure everything works properly oh little jittering in the selection graphics Hopefully you can see that, yeah. But I think that's more attributed to the ROM itself or the emulator. Just to see if it can handle um, the performance. 
We'll try uh, Dunk Country 3. Now I noticed some weird artifacts here on the left side if you can see. I don't know if that's the game, or the ROM, or the emulator causing this, but the gameplay is smooth. I will say that. This performed a lot better than some other systems that I expected to perform better on the Super Nintendo. So that's awesome. That's actually good. Okay, so far what I like to say is I really like in the performance on this console as far as the pre fourth gen. Um, they have a variety of uh, systems here. Let me get into some of the arcade stuff and I'm gonna go with main because main could be a mixed bag depending on what games you pick. Um, but let's see how it handles these arcade games. Um, let's go back out. It says there's only 13 games on main. Let's try Neo Geo to figure out how it handles these games. X-Men Children of Adam will be a great game. And then we're going to get into my final thoughts on the M17. I know I killed some coins back in the day on this game. Gotta pick Wolverine. If you're 80s, 90s, you definitely pick Wolverine. I think Gambit was a cool character too. Typically, if you like uh, Cyclops then, or Captain America, you will probably like Leonardo too. But I'm more of a Raph, Vegeta, uh, Wolverine type of guy. I like that too. What amazes me about these games is like how they spiraled into um I'll say in a second, how they spiraled into like the X-Men vs Street Fighter games and things like that. Guys, it's running smooth perfectly. Let's go ahead and get to my final thoughts on the M17. So now we're at the point where we're talking about the overall thoughts, and I want to touch on a few key points from the beginning. In the box, they sort of advertise uh, fifth gen and above PSP games, and I like the graphics on it, but I don't think they should have led with this. I think if they would have put maybe some Neo Geo, maybe some arcade games on here, that would have better suited this system. Also, the 3D performance on the system, such as Nintendo 64, such as PlayStation 1, also into your PSP, you're going to get mixed performance. So, it could not necessarily be the CPU built in this thing, but it could be maybe they didn't add enough RAM to it, maybe it's the emulator, maybe these systems can be refined. But for the price point, um, if you want to do 4th gen and before, I think this is a great little console to carry around. One thing I really appreciated was the layout of the buttons and the button placement which made this very comfortable. The smooth UI was very awesome and easy to navigate and I really like that change up compared to some of the other handhelds. Even the MyU's and your RG35X don't have a smooth UI just like that where I'm clicking and it's snappy. So that's a great addition to the M17. Now, would I say this is a good candidate for modding on a software side of things? I would say absolutely yes. Um, I haven't seen too many videos of, of any modding done, but if this can run open ELIC, I assume there's some other cores and other ROMs that it's, this can run. As far as the design, I like how they took cues from the switch and also the button layout. Also, the triggers are really nice and the buttons are snappy. It's a lightweight system but also it's just enough for you to get a good purchase and for you to enjoy your game. If you're looking for a system with a great value and price point, also if you're looking for a system with a much larger screen, 
and the ability to play some 3D games, then this might be the console for you. Now, if you're looking for perfect performance, eh, you might need to keep looking, but for the amount of money that this costs, I think it's a great deal, depending on what games you wanna play. So if you wanna pick this console up, links will be in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a super thanks and definitely subscribe to the channel. Round three on my handheld showdown will be coming out soon and the handhelds are gonna go head to head based off of their ease of use and the user friendliness. So definitely check that out. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Take care and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.